What's going on everyone? Today we're here with my 2019 Hyundai Ioniq. Uh, I'm going to go through what I'm going to do to fix the notorious rear camber alignment issues. I noticed this the first time I brought it in after about 20,000 miles or 15,000 to get my rear tires rotated and they had significant camber wear. Um, I did put a toolbox back there for work um, in order to transport it to my new job and um, I figured that might have you know brought the alignment out of whack. So the guys at uh, Les Schwab or wherever I went said there's little to no adjustment in the rear and they'll get it as close to zero as they can. So they got it almost to zero, negative 0.7 or something like that, which is okay I guess. And I got a new set of tires put on the rear and then I rotate them to the front eventually and they said the same thing, camber wear. This was two months later maybe, or maybe six months later. Let's give it six months. So I figured I better tackle this issue or I'm just going to be eating up tires way before uh, their due change. So I'm going to go over how I'm going to do that. Hope you guys are still sticking with me and we'll try and fix this issue. So what we have here is Godspeed rear, I think they're upper camber arms. They might be lower, pretty sure upper camber arms. Basically what that does is that's going to give us adjustment in order to adjust the camber out. All right, some materials you might need to complete the job, which I used is a hammer, flashlight, zip ties, pry bars, uh, diagonal cutters, 10 millimeter uh, socket, the Hyundai lock key, if you still have the locks, I remove them, I don't like them. Um, shallow well 19, deep well 19, shallow well 21, uh, assortment of extensions, a 19 millimeter wrench, and I have an extendable um, extendable half inch drive that ratchet that I use for a pry or a uh, breaker bar as well. And then a couple of crescents, an impact if you need one. And of course the part, Godspeed AK-11. This works on the Veloster as well and that's why they make them. They actually don't make them for this car, but it fits and it will say it fits. So don't worry about that. This is my daily, it's super dirty. Right here is just two very simple arms. We're just gonna do one side at a time because the exhaust goes right over the rear cross, remember? All right, so I took the wheel off and right here, this is the arm we are replacing. Here's the arm. You want to adjust, do it this way, so that way the adjustments are out right here by the wheel. Uh, take some pictures, make sure you do the washers, how they're supposed to go. This should be an easy job, just two nuts and bolts, that's it. And then remove that brake line off of it. But if you can see, there is the bolt and the nut is back here. Let me see if I can get a light on it so we can see. The nut is back there somewhere, way up there. I could feel it with my hand, but I can't see it. So unfortunately, this could turn out to be a pretty difficult job. We're gonna go ahead and just remove the front first and then try and get on the rear. So it's gonna be a 19 wrench and a 19 socket. Both sides are 19, which is nice. That's off. So what I like to do is put the nut back on and then get your hammer and tap it a little bit. So we got that one almost off. I think I need to lift some of the weight off of it. I think that's the issue I'm having here. So I'm gonna get my second jack and do this. Okay, so I'm gonna put this long extension on through the back. And then I'm gonna attempt to shove the wrench back there and get on the nut while I'm breaking it loose with this. Definitely a second set of hands would be ideal here. That's off tight. I'm getting it off. Luckily, I think the backside is a nut plate or a welded nut. So you only have to get this front side off back there. We'll see. All right, so you can see the bolt back there it's out it's loose uh, but I'm gonna use this pry bar and try and see if there's any threads still or if I need to put my ratchet on it 
So I'm gonna need two hands for that. All right, so I'm trying to take that top bolt off and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a jack under here and put a little pressure on it just so that spring doesn't come out. I don't know what kind of tension is on it. I don't want that spring to just shoot out at me. But I got the bolt mostly out. Yeah, you can see it back there. It's about to come out. Got a little 10 millimeter. I'm gonna take off this brake line here and then I'm gonna take off the 10 mil there and that'll free this brake line up. So when I remove this arm, we don't break nothing. So I took both those out, set the bolts to the side, but you can see now this is out of the way for when we remove the arm. Pulled this one up. I found out I had to jack it up a decent amount and then push on this a little, the rotor, the top of it. So now we're gonna pull out the back side. Just push on it. Boom. There we go. Got the old one out. Just make sure you figure out which orientation it's gonna be. We'll grab the new one and it should go just like that. There we go. Also, I'm gonna spray a little bit of WD-40 on this just to keep the rust from getting there just a little bit. You don't want to put too much. Unfortunately on this, there's no holes for your 10 millimeter bolts that they had. Uh, I think I'm just gonna drill a hole on it. That way we get what we need. But I'm just gonna test fit it. Cool. And we want these lengths to be the same. You just measure up the eyelets there so you can see we're short just a little bit. So I'm adjusting it and it looks like it's got two adjustabilities. You can bring this big piece out and the little piece. I think I'm gonna bring the big piece out a little bit, tighten it this down, and then bring this back in some. That way I don't have a skinny rod out. i am got more of a thick rod. So I'm making a lot of adjustments here. Hold my arm up again. Let's see. Yep, it went this way. Pretty darn close. I go. Ow. Fuck. Dang it. Woo. Got a little sliver in me. Okay. Okay, that's about equal. I'm gonna tighten this one down. You can see the locking washers. Tighten this one down to that. And then this should not be able to move. And I'm not gonna tighten this one too much because when I install it, I want some maneuverability because if this isn't straight, I'm gonna need to turn that. So I'm gonna put this side in first. That way there's no pressure on it. Perfect. You want to thread it in. You don't need to tighten it, just get a couple threads. See if you can pull the bolt out. Nope, can't pull the bolt out. We're good. Uh, now, this I left loose so I can turn it, right? So now we'll lean this forward oop, as much as we can and put this bolt through, get it ready. Definitely would help with a, a friend, but I don't have any of those. All right. Ooh. So I got that through. I messed up here. See the bolts not coming through? The long one goes in on the outside. Ah! You learn something new every day, right? Now we're gonna try this again. Use my bad knee. Push this sucker. She's a tight fit. Ah, no, don't come off, don't come off. Come on. There we 
There we go. Woo. Now, washer and nut. And there we are. So I'm gonna tighten those down and let's see if this, I don't even think this is gonna work. Oh, it's on the wrong side. Make sure your brake cable goes on this inside. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm gonna save time on the other side. It will not reach back there. I'm gonna zip tie this around. Luckily it's got a little corner plate so it should hold it on really good. So don't waste your time on drilling your new equipment. After you get it all bolted down like I have, don't forget to tighten this little one to this jam nut, otherwise this will move. It shouldn't rotate at all, but I'm not gonna take those chances. All right, I got the back bolt fully torqued. This is fully torqued. Jam nut is jammed. This gets jammed to the piece. And then safety, uh, well not safety, zip tied this on and it's sturdy. So I'm gonna go ahead put the wheel back on, drop it, do the other side. Uh, that's it for you guys. This was all live time, my first time ever doing this. So you can see how simple it is for someone who's never done it before. So with recording, this took me about two hours. Uh, the first side took about an hour, hour and a half. And then I did the other side without recording anything and I knew what I was doing. Because the first side I recorded, I didn't know what I was doing. So you get the real live take on what it would be like if you maybe you get under there but this side took me 20 minutes if that also and then to get the car up you're going to need a couple jacks and jack stands or just one jack and jack stands but you'll need to use the jack to jack up the rotor assembly or the uh, suspension arms but yeah i can't wait to take this and get it uh, aligned again and rotate the tires and it will hopefully hold alignment now and not be uh, cambering out. Luckily, these are new tires, but the fronts I've had not too long, and I had them rotated, but you can see, see how deep the outside tread is compared to the inside tread. Can't really tell by much, but it's there. So, to prevent from eating tires, uh, we changed this. This part, I can't tell you how much it was, I can't remember, but I believe it was around 180 bucks, which isn't too bad, as opposed to about 200 bucks a tire, if not more, if you get high tread wear. So I already went through two, uh, two rear tires because I drove too long without rotating them and it wore the inside really bad. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you liked the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll do more stuff on the Ionic in the future as I see fit. Um, thanks for watching guys and as always I'll see you guys next time.